year was 1630, and a wooden ship was preparing to set sail from England to America. On board were a group of Protestant Christians called the Puritans, who had been trying to reform the English church as part of the Reformation. But they faced severe persecution and decided to seek refuge in America, where they hoped to establish a nation based on the principles found in Scripture. The ship was loaded with provisions, tools, and supplies for their journey across the Atlantic. The passengers, however, were anxious and excited about the unknown journey ahead, but their leader, John Withrop, was calm and composed. He had penned a sermon entitled, A Model of Christian Charity, which laid out the vision for America. In his sermon, Winthrop invoked Jesus' words from the Sermon on the Mount, urging his fellow Puritans to follow the counsel of Micah 6, 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. And if they did, they would become a shining city on a hill. His words have inspired generations and reveal the foundations of America, which are built on the Word of God. And that is why, for generations, preachers and politicians have evoked John Winthrop's words on board the Arbella. Now the only way to avoid this shipwreck and to provide for our posterity is to follow the counsel of Micah, to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. The Lord will be our God and dwell among us as his own people, and he will command a blessing upon us in all our ways, so that we shall see much more of his wisdom, power, and truth. When he shall make us a praise and glory, and men shall say of succeeding plantations, Lord, make it like that of New England, for we must consider that we shall be as a city on a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us, so that if we deal falsely with our God, and so cause him to withdraw his help from us, then we shall be made a story and a byword through the world. As Ronald Reagan prepared to deliver his farewell address to the American people, he knew that he wanted to leave them with a message of hope and inspiration. Having spent eight years as President of the United States, he began to speak about a phrase that had always held a special place in his heart. It was a phrase that he thought had been coined by John Winthrop, City on a Hill, but it was actually Jesus' words from the Sermon on the Mount. Reagan explained that he had always been drawn to this phrase because it embodied the American story of another freedom man in a little wooden boat. He spoke of the many immigrants who had come to America over the years seeking a better life for themselves and their families. They had all been inspired by the idea of America as a shining city on a hill, a beacon of hope and freedom to the rest of the world. But what did it really mean to be a city on a hill? Reagan explained that it was about more than just being a powerful nation. It was about living up to the highest ideals of freedom and democracy. It was about being a shining example to the rest of the world, showing them what was possible when people were free to pursue their dreams and live their lives in peace. And with those words, Ronald Reagan left office. But his vision of America as a city on a hill continued to inspire generations of Americans to come. The past few days when I've been at that window upstairs, I've thought a bit of the shining city upon a hill. The phrase comes from John Winthrop, who wrote it to describe the America he imagined. What he imagined was important because he was an early pilgrim an early freedom man. He journeyed here on what today we'd call a little wooden boat. I've spoken of the shining city all my political life, but I don't know if I ever quite communicated what I saw when I said it. 
But in my mind, it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace. A city with pre-ports that hummed with commerce and creativity. And if there had to be city walls, the walls had doors, and the doors were open to anyone with the will and the heart to get here. That's how I saw it and see it still. And how stands the city on this winter night? More prosperous, more secure, and happier than it was eight years ago. But more than that, after 200 years, two centuries, she still stands strong and true on the granite ridge, and her glow is held steady no matter what storm. And she's still a beacon, still a magnet for all who must have freedom, for all the pilgrims from all the lost places who are hurtling through the darkness toward home. We've done our part, and as I walk off into the city street, my friends, we did it. We weren't just marking time, we made a difference. We made the city stronger, we made the city freer, and we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. And so, goodbye, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Let's explore that, because the founding of America was pivotal in God's plan. A city on a hill, America, the real America, was the city on a hill that stopped slavery. In America, the city on a hill made room and created a safe place for the Jews to live in freedom. And the nation welcomed generations of immigrants who could not find freedom anywhere else on earth, freedom to worship God in peace. America became a base that has sent missionaries all around the world. And all of the wars that a city on a hill has fought in in its 250 year history have been to defend freedom and protect the defenseless from tyranny. But if this nation is in the providence of God destined to lead the way in the moral and political emancipation of the world, it's because the church understood her high calling. In the pulpit, in the pew, harnessed the word and prayer for the work. It was only natural that politicians who believed in this idea of America would invoke Winthrop's speech, which were echoes of Jesus' words that he spoke that day on the windswept hills of Israel. <laughs> 